Thank you. I had a number of questions on Cuba as well. Okay. Um, appreciate that. I wanted to do I have to write all these down? How many? Uh, do I <laughs> <laughs> a number sounded Quick intimidating. As I can. Quick as I can. Okay. I wanted to see if you got any assurances from the Cuban government that it would not revert to the same sort of um, sabotage the deal as it has in the past with when past presidents have made similar overtures to the government. Um, Meaning, you mind, be specific. What do you mean? Um, when the the um, Clinton administration made some overtures, they shot down planes. They sort of had this pattern of doing provocative. Um, okay. So just, gen just, just general provocative activities. Provocative activities any time right. the U.S. has sort of reached out a hand to them. Okay. I wanted to see what is your knowledge or, of whether Fidel Castro, did he play, have any role in the talks? Did you talk, when you talked to President Castro, Raul Castro, did Fidel Castro's name come up? Or mm -hmm. did you ask about him? How's he doing? People haven't seen him in a while. Um, given the deep opposition from some Republicans in Congress um, to lifting the embargo to an embassy to any of the changes that you're doing, are you going to personally get involved in terms of talking to them about um, efforts that they want to do to block um, money on a new embassy? All right, Leslie, I think I'm going to cut you okay. off here. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is taking up a lot of time. Okay, all right. All right, now, the, uh, so with respect to sabotage, I, I mean, my understanding of the uh, history, for example, the, the, the plane being shot down, it's not clear that that was the Cuban government purposely trying to undermine overtures by the Clinton administration. It was uh, a tragic uh, circumstance that ended up collapsing talks that had begun to take place. Uh, uh, I haven't seen uh, a historical record that suggests that they shot the plane down specifically in order to undermine overtures by the Clinton government. I think the, uh, uh, it is not precedented for the President of the United States and the President of Cuba to make an announcement at the same time that they are moving towards normalizing relations. Uh, so there, there hasn't been anything like this uh, in the past. That doesn't mean that over the next two years, uh, we can't anticipate them taking certain actions that we may end up finding uh, deeply troubling, either inside of Cuba or with respect to their foreign policy. Uh, and that could put significant strains on the relationship. But that's true of a lot of countries out there <laughs> where we have an embassy. And the whole point of normalizing relations is that it gives us a greater opportunity to have influence with that government than not. Um, so uh, I would be surprised if the Cuban government perfect, uh, purposely tries to undermine what is now effectively its own policy. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they take, at any given time, actions that we think are a problem. And we will be in a position to uh, respond to whatever actions they take, the same way we do with a whole range of countries around the world uh, when they do things we think are wrong. Um, but uh, the point is, is that we will be in a better position, I think, to uh, actually have uh, some influence and there may be carrots as well as sticks that we can then apply. Um, the, only, uh, the only way that uh, Fidel's name came up, I think I may have mentioned this uh, in the, uh, the David Muir article uh, interview that I did, was uh, I, I delivered a fairly lengthy statement at the front end about how we're looking forward to uh, a new future uh, in the relationship between our two countries, but that we are going to continue to press on issues of democracy and human rights, which uh, we think uh, are important. Um, you know, my opening remarks probably took about 15 minutes, which on the phone is a pretty long time. And at the end of that, uh, he said, uh, uh, Mr. President, you're, uh, you're still a young man. Um, perhaps you have the op at the end of my remarks, I apologize for taking you know, uh, such a long time, but I want to make sure that before we engage in the conversation that we, we uh, 
he was very clear about uh, where I stood. He said, oh, don't worry about it, Mr. President. Uh, uh, you're still a young man, and you have still the chance to break Fidel's record. He once spoke seven hours straight. Um, uh, and then President Castro proceeded to deliver his own uh, preliminary remarks uh, that lasted at least twice as long as mine. Uh, and then I was able to say, obviously, it runs in the family. Um, but, but that was the only discussion of uh, Fidel Castro that we had. Um, I sort of forgot all the other, all the other questions. I have a few more. How personally involved are you going to get in Well, uh, with respect to Congress, I, I, we cannot uh, unilaterally bring down the embargo. Uh, th that's codified in, in the Libertad Act. And what I do think w is going to happen, though, is there's, there's going to be uh, a process where Congress digests it. There are bipartisan supporters of uh, our new approach. There are bipartisan detractors of this new approach. Um, people will see how the actions we take unfold. Uh, and I think there's going to be a healthy debate inside of Congress. And I will certainly weigh in. Uh, uh, I think that ultimately we need to go ahead and uh, pull down the embargo, which I think has been self-defeating in uh, advancing the aims that we're interested in. But uh, I don't anticipate that that happens uh, right away. I think people are going to want to see how does this move uh, forward before there's any serious debate about um, uh, whether or not we would make major shifts in the, uh, in the embargo.